In this video, you are going to learn how to pick any shape layer and turn it into a 3D object. This is usually how far After Effects goes, but today I am going to share some advanced techniques that will allow you to bend any 2D object. We will then create these beautiful 3D backgrounds without leaving After Effects. If we have a look at our intro video in here, we can see that we have various scenes in here with 3D geometry that is actually bending in here. This is all done in After Effects and the 3D actually looks quite great. So let's see how we, we can actually replicate this. Let's pick this scene, which should illustrate this point perfectly. So let's go to a new composition in here. And we're simply going to draw a simple ellipse in here. Hold shift on your keyboard so that it's perfectly round. And then we can align it to the middle like that. Perfect. We have our first shape there. Now we can change this to 3D. We can rotate this. So let's rotate this on the Y axis on the x-axis actually, so let's make it minus 90. We can go now to the top view, just like that. And now let's pick the anchor point tool from here. And let's make sure that x, y, z are visible in there. And then we can, can hold command and position that snap it to the bottom of this layer. Perfect. So our first layer is set up. Now I'm going to go to layer and create a new null object. And that would be right in the middle in there of the shape layer. And we can change that also to 3D, just like that. Wonderful. Now let's go back to the active camera. And now we can start moving these shapes around. So let's hit V on our keyboard and let's move that below like that. Wonderful. And we can duplicate this and move it up like that. Great. And now we can type both of these shape layers to the null object right over here. And I'm going to rotate that null layer in here until I get something that I that I like. So somewhere around there, I like this as a starting point. So of course, right now the shading is totally off. Let's go to the these two layers in here and open these up. So first of all, before you see this option, so we're going to go to geometry options, you need to check that you have the the advanced settings set up in here. So let's go to composition, composition settings, and from 3D renderer, make sure that advanced 3D is set to on. So let's make sure that it's set to advanced 3D and click OK. Now let's go to geometry options in here, and we're going to go to the extrusion depth and let's, let's extrude that to around 30. Great. And bevel depth something around 2 is fine, but we need to change that to a convex shape. This way the edges are rounded and we get that nice specular highlight right over there. Great. Now I'm going to go back to the null layer and I'm going to scale it down just a little bit, just like that. Great. So now let's animate this. The animation is actually part of the whole bending effect. So it's important to follow kind of this procedure in here. So I'm going to create a first and like a waving effect in here. So uh, let's go pick both of these layers in here and let's hit R on our keyboard and I want to simply rotate the Y axis in here. So I'm going to toggle the stopwatches of that. Go to around four second mark in here and click on the stopwatches of that as well. And now we can go to the middle and I'm going to rotate it somewhere around there. Now I'm going to go to the null layer in here and I'm going to keyframe the orientation and make sure that we have another keyframe at the start and at the end of this animation cycle. And now I'm going to go to the middle and I'm going to move to rotate this until I get something that I basically like. Maybe some something around like this. Perfect. So I have this set up like that and let's rotate it a little bit more like that and like that. Just so our animation is more interesting basically. Perfect. Now, one last step that I'm going to do is I'm going to pick the first shape layer in here, hit P on my keyboard, and I'm going to also animate that. So let's do the same thing in here, keyframe at the start, center, and at the end. And then I'm simply going to pick the position of this and move it up a little bit like that. Great. Now let's hit you on our keyboard a couple of times until we see all the keyframes in here, pick all of those keyframes and simply hit F9 on your keyboard. And that will easy ease those keyframes. 
and the animation should look better. Now, the animation for my liking is slightly slow. So to fix that, I'm simply going to make sure that all our keyframes are picked. Hold Alt or Option on your keyboard, go to the last keyframes in here, and we can extend them like this. This is a quick trick that you can use to extend your animation or retime it. And once I'm happy with that, I can simply pick all of those keyframes, and this is a new feature in After Effects where we can paste multiple keyframes across multiple layers. And we can paste them right over here, and now our animation is looping. Great. So this is awesome. Now let's reshade this. So I'm going to introduce a few lights. So let's go to layer, new, and light. And I'm going to use this point light, pick OK. And usually I like to use around three lights. So this one is going to be around here. It's going to illuminate the left side, duplicate that. This one is going to illuminate the right side. And usually I like to reduce the intensity of this. So T on your keyboard and reduce the intensity of that. And then one final light in the center, somewhere around here. And let's hit P on our keyboard. Actually, let's pick the Z from here. We can move it around like that and go to T to find opacity. And I'm going to increase that like that. And this is quite great. This looks quite great. I quite like this, so I'm going to keep it with this shading. Now, let's see how we can bend these 3D objects. Before we jump to the next section, I would like to just humbly ask you to press the like button and even subscribe if you like this content. This will help me to reach more people and show you more techniques. So I have this new empty composition in here, and I'm simply going to drag and drop that 3D scene that I have created earlier. So there we go. I have the 3D scene set up in here. And now I'm going to create a new layer. So let's go to layer, new, and solid. So let's rename this to ramp. And from here, we can simply pick a quick ramp effect, gradient ramp, and drag and drop it over that layer. Now we want this warping effect, this bending effect to happen on the horizontal. So I'm going to change this to be happening on the horizontal like this. And usually I would like this to be from white to black. So let's swap the colors like this. Great. So this is set up. We can hide this layer and go back to this 3D scene layer. And now I'm going to find the time displacement effect. Simply drag and drop that over that layer. And then from the source in here, we're going to set that ramp. And make sure that the source is set to effects and masks so that it takes that ramp effect into consideration. And immediately in here, we can see this effect happening. Now, there are some settings that we need to tweak. So let's zoom in in here. First, we can see that the resolution is very low in here. It's quite choppy. And also we can tweak the animation. So if we increase this value in here, we can see that the bending effect happens more drastically. So let's go to around here and we can see that drastic movement of the bending. And if we increase that further, we can see that even more. But if we decrease that, we can see that the bending effect is more subtle. I quite like this effect. So 0 0.6 is ideal in this case. And this also helps with the resolution. Now to increase the resolution further, usually I like to use the time resolution of around 400. Of course, this increases your rendering time. So take that into consideration. So I'm going to ramp preview this and we can see how this looks. And there we have it. This looks quite great. So now if we take a look at the scene here, we can see that we can use this technique to create various, various shapes in here. And if we go inside of these scenes in here, we can see how actually these are set up. So we have different spheres in here that are just being animated using the null layer in here as well. And with simple, very simple rotations in here. So that's basically it for the bending effect. Now, one final bonus thing that I wanted to show you is how you can actually create this 3D background. If we look at our project in here, we can see that we have this kind of 3D dots background wrapping around these 3D objects. So I'm going to show you very quickly how we can replicate this. 
In this case, we are going to start from this simple grid that is made from ellipses that are repeated along the background here using a simple repeater from here. And now let's introduce a new layer. Layer, new, and solid. We can rename this to Met. Press OK. And then from here, from Effects and Presets, we can drag a quick fractal noise effect and let's place it right over here. Now, in here we need to modify these settings, so I'm going to rename this to block, to noise type to block, and I'm going to reduce the complexity to zero. Perfect. And now I want these little boxes to be kind of the same size of each one of these. So let's go back to this one, and I'm simply going to go to transform, and going to scale that down somewhere around there. Perfect. Let's first increase the contrast, and we can even decrease a little bit the brightness, like that. And now we can go to Evolution, hold Option on our keyboard, and click. And now if we go down below in here, we can type in Time times 200. Perfect. And like that, this is also animated. Wonderful. Now we are, can hide this and pick this little grid in here. And as a track mat, use the mat right over here. Great. So now make sure that Luma Matte is selected in here instead of Alpha. So in this case, Luma Matte is selected in here and you can see that twinkling happening right over there. And now we can simply duplicate this grid, play, place it right below it, right over here, remove the matte, and we can recolor this to something like a dark purple, somewhere like this. Great. And now if I pick all of these layers and put them below, below this, we can see the twinkling effect happening in here. And now we have just one last step is to change this kind of to a 3D, 3D effect in here. So to do that, it's fairly simple. You simply go to layer, new adjustment layer, place it right below that 3D object. And we're going to find CC lens from here, drag and drop it over that adjustment layer, and then we can increase the size. And you can immediately see what will happen in here. So if we keyframe this at around 400 in here or 500 keyframe, and then go to around here and reduce its size to somewhere around here. Now we can see that effect happening. So we have the 3D object and the background, of course, in here, warping around as well. So that's basically it, guys. I hope that you learned something new from this video. Now, in our promo, we have used this technique where we morph from one font size to the other, and I'm going to leave a link in the description for this video that explains just that. So just click here to watch that. And of course, don't forget to like and subscribe. This will really help us to reach more people.